Did you ever watch Sherlock on BBC with Benedict Cumberbatch? And remember that episode where he went into his mind palace? It was a mental way of organizing his thoughts and his memories so that he could piece clues together and solve the mysteries. The Finnish series Border Town on Netflix draws a lot of inspiration from that. But is that enough to carry the show? Kari is a Finnish police detective who uses his mind palace to solve crimes in the small town on the Finland and Russia border. Now, the show is currently in its third season, and I binged the entire series in order to catch up. This is a crime drama where the cases typically span more than one episode, and I liked that part because it just allowed them to go into more detail and to tell a larger story. Now, there are detectives in this special crimes unit, and it's fairly a small unit. I mean, there's only four or five people, maybe, but we don't get a lot of backstory on some of them. I mean, some of them are just kind of there. We might know their name, but we don't know anything else about them. But there are a few main detectives. There's Kari, there's Lena, and there's Nico. And there's also a medical examiner who we get to know fairly well. Throughout their series, there are the crimes that Kari and the team are trying to solve, but then there's also a larger drama at play, and that spans the entire course of not only season one, but all three seasons so far, that it just weaves in and out, and it's telling the larger story, which I appreciate. And with that drama, I mean, you not only have just Kari, his family, his relationships, but also a very powerful and connected family in the town. Billy Vertanen plays Kari, and he does a wonderful job at being awkward and just weird, but also endearing. Now, at times he's very off-putting. His, his behavior and his mannerisms don't always lend themselves to empathy or sympathy, but you see a genius at work. And there are points in the series where you just, you feel so heartbroken for him because he knows what he's trying to do, but he also, his mind won't let him do certain things. That his obsession with finishing the puzzle, with solving the case, takes precedence over everything else. And so then you see that internal struggle of him knowing what he needs to do, but not being able to break out of that and really deal with it how he should. He has some social issues and some awkwardness, and I wish they would have put more of that in season one, but we really do get to have a much better understanding of who Kari is in season two. That's when we really see just more backstory. I mean, we truly do. We see him as a kid. We get to understand him more, maybe not fully yet, but we're given so much more insight into who he is, how he grew up, and just what formed him into who he is today. I mean, he's aware of his shortcomings, and I like that. But that's what I was talking about, too, that he doesn't necessarily know how to break out of those. That there is that struggle then, and you see it, and it's agonizing to him, and it translates to us, and so we can empathize with him in those moments. In addition to Kari, there's Lena, who is a former Russian FSB agent and she now helps out the Finnish police, and she's rough. Not as in rough as in, oh, I don't really like her. Well, there are times where I just don't like her at all based on her behavior or the way she treats people, but this woman can take care of herself. You do not want to mess with her at all. And we get a lot more of her backstory in season two also, which we, we just barely scratched the surface in season one. We're introduced to her in a really cool way, and I appreciate that, and I, I liked how we got to know her in season one, but really in season two, that's when it picks up, and that's where we get to know so much more about her and her situation. Now, honestly, the cases in this, they're not all spellbinding. Some of them are just kind of okay. They didn't grab hold of me and slam my butt into the seat and just grab my face and be like, you are going to watch this and not blink. No, some of them were like, eh, okay, it's kind of moving along. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of into this. And then others, I was absolutely glued. Like my, my anxiety rose, my blood pressure went up. I was so invested in what was going on in this case or in this situation where I couldn't look away. And so the inconsistency was a little bit of a bummer that I really wish that all of the cases would have been more intriguing, would have really just sucked me in. And I think some of that plays into just the, the overall story that's going on, the, the family drama, the political aspect and, and scheming and conniving that goes on in the background. Sometimes that took a little bit more of the forefront picture and it intertwined with some of the story that was going on for that episode or those two episodes. But what that did is it took away some of the urgency that I felt or just the excitement 
of a case. Now in season three, there are some, some characters or some emotions, some situations that don't totally feel fleshed out to me. That we get to see a character behave in a certain way and we can kind of figure out what's going on, but not totally. Like it just seems too much of a jump. Like it's an extreme reaction and maybe it's justified, but we haven't been given all of the justification for that and for the extreme reaction. I mean, there's also, you just see some characters reach a breaking point and it's saddening to watch that you just, you look at these characters and these relationships as they're dissolving and it, it truly, it breaks your heart because it shouldn't be that way. And you wish that they could change it. And you see the characters knowing that what they're doing, they shouldn't be doing, and they know how they're damaging those relationships, but they continue on. And almost like they couldn't help themselves, like they, they were obsessed or they were just stuck in that moment and couldn't break free of it. And now they have to live with all of those consequences. Now, the scenery in this show too is wonderful to look at. I mean, we get not only the town, which looks beautiful, but we also get just the outlying forest. And sometimes it's just snow and it's like, woof. That's really cold. They wear jackets almost all the time. And I looked on the map and it is pretty far north, especially for a California boy. So, I mean, you know, there is that <laughs> to consider, but it's wonderful to look at. It really is. Now they do use a lot of flashbacks in the show. And so if you were watching this out of order, or maybe you skipped a season and just went right to season two or right to season three, some of it's not going to make sense because they draw all the way back to season one in season three. And so you really do need to watch this in order. There's a lot of emotions at play in this. I mean, there's grief, loss, acceptance, love. I like that we see a ton of character growth in almost all of our characters that we really do get to see them develop. Now, some of them don't always learn from their growth. Some don't always stick to that growth that they're experiencing and they regress, but at least we're seeing the progress in there. And I think it's most evident in Kari and how he just really, I mean, he's carrying the show because it is focused on him and, and how he solves crimes, but also his relationships and how he's trying to figure out the puzzle of his family. Now, like I said, some of the crimes aren't really spellbinding to me and that plays then into the pace. Like for the most part, the pace of the show is pretty good, but some of it does drag. And I think that's just a characteristic because the story itself wasn't that engaging. And so the episode as a whole felt much longer than it really was. There's 31 total episodes in the first three seasons and each of them are about an hour long. So there's definitely a time commitment should you choose to start binging this. And even though some of the pace may drag a little bit and some of the cases may not be as intriguing as others, Overall, it is a fun watch and it does tell a really good story, especially with character growth and just character arc. There is sex, nudity, profanity, and some gruesome violence and imagery. I give seasons one through three of Border Town four out of five couches. So are you watching any good crime dramas lately? Let me know what one is in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.